mum. <coughs> All right. So today is a floral Friday and we are going to be using the delightful Daisy and um, making us some Gerber daisies. Hi, Melanie. Hey, both people on right now are called Melanie. Ha <laughs> ha. So um, off the screen, this is a brand new stamp set. So I'm just rubbing the stamp set in order to make it um, stamp properly. We are in full show mode here at Sweet Sentiment Stamps. We are getting ready for our next show, which is in Novi, Michigan. Hi, Marianne. I sure miss you, friend. I see your uh, <coughs> puppy is adjusting well. Sorry, I can't even say that with a straight face. gonna have to stamp these twice just because it's a brand new stamp set I've never stamped it before and so after I do that the first time or two I use it then I get really good stamp lines out of it and I know all the tricks to do terror puppy right I think mom and dad's puppy is finally out of the terror puppy stage. He's a good boy now. So hey, you know, only two and a half years. Hi, Judy. So we're gonna stamp a bunch of these cause we're gonna color a bunch of these. And um, you're gonna see how fast they color up. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but Heartfelt Creations has decided to close up shop and, um, retire, spend time with grandkids and kids and all that stuff. So we wish them a very happy retirement. Um, but now, uh, Sweet Sentiment is going to be where you go for all of your 3D flower needs. So I wanted to show you some 3D flowers that are very easy to make. And um, Gerber daisies are a lot of people's favorite flower. I know, right? So we're gonna make five panels of these. So just FYI, that's why I'm going to town stamping these right now. I have three done. Mary Ann's here, so I know one of these flowers has to be purple. Um, do we have any other requests for flower colors? That's four. So, yes, you guys will be able to come to Sweet Sentiment to get all of your 3D flowers. Orangish yellow, turquoise. Judy, Gerber's are your favorite too. They're Sandy's favorite too. Light turquoise. Like this color. All right, check it out. So that's five. And I'm gonna grab, so this is my chamois. It looks disgusting. It's all good. Hey Meg. Happy you could join us today. <clears throat> I am in full on make and take mode. I almost lost track of time and could not 
stop um, making make and takes. All right. That one goes there. Nope. There we go. That one goes there. <clears throat> Hi, Sandy. And that one goes there. Okay. So I'm going to worry about leaves and stuff later, but for now, we're going to color up some of these. And I have some color blend choices from some of you. So, I write TGIF for reals. So, I'm going to start with like a pinkish purple. And I realize I just sounded like I was really far away, but I had to reach for my markers. Um... Oh, all right, Judy. Happy PTing. <laughs> Sounds terrible, right? So with these flowers, um, I'm just gonna really simply color them. color the middles a little bit darker than the outsides. This is purple for Marianne and for my bestie because they love purple. Sandy is the purple Gerber Daisy on my arm. Because all of my tattoos represent friends of mine. So right here is a big old purple Gerber Daisy for Sandy. So what are y'all doing on this Friday? It is rainy and icky here, but to be honest, I really like the rain. I'm one of those people who could totally live in Washington or Seattle or something, if it wasn't Washington or Seattle or something, just saying. Um, but I like the rain, and so I could stay in the rain all the time. when I don't have to go out in it. I mean, there is that disclaimer. Okay, playing hooky from work today. Good for you. It's 90 there. Yeah, it is definitely not 90 here. It's windy. The temperature has come up since I told you last, though. It is 53 now. <laughs> So this flower is super, super versatile. You can use it in conjunction with some of our other flowers, um, or you can use it on its own. Today I'm gonna use it on its own. Um, if you just use like two of them, you have a regular daisy. If you use three or four or five, you have a Gerber daisy. Um, if you keep stacking them, you can get to a zinnia. 
Um, if you stack them even further, you can get to a Dahlia. So um, I know Meg, I colored Mermaid too. I'm, I'm working on Mermaid. And don't forget, we have a release coming up. A release is on the third Saturday of the month. I cannot tell you what that date is because my calendar is broken. <laughs> when you travel as much as Sandy and I do, it's all broken. All right, so there's our purple ones. Yeah, I've been die cutting for the last two days, so I feel you, Bessie. I feel you. Okay, so somebody said turquoise. So I'm gonna go for a turquoise, or teal-ish color. Five twenty. Our release is on the twentieth. Hi, Linda. Linda's watching. So this is a bunch of just, this is a great way to practice your brush strokes, honestly. Notice how quickly I'm going with these because I don't want to create a pattern. So your brain will automatically try to make a pattern. And so the slower you go and the more deliberate you are with your brush strokes, the more even that pattern will come out. And I do not want these to have an even pattern on them. So I'm going fairly quickly with my brush strokes in order to avoid that. It's definitely what I teach in my classes. especially when coloring botanicals, any type of botanicals. Um, you want to have those quick brush strokes because Mother Nature makes things perfectly imperfect. So, you're gonna be in Michigan, yay Meg! I'm so excited. I'm not teaching a class in Michigan. I know, Marianne, I'm already searching for Twix bars. Har, har, har. We have this thing with Marianne and Twix bars, let me tell you. It's hilarious. Because, I'm going to throw you under the bus, okay, Marianne? Marianne texts me one day out of the blue. Did you text or did you call? I don't know, I can't remember. And we randomly talk at times for like hours. It's all good. And um, she texts me, so or calls me. It's not anything out of the norm. And she says, I'm really, really confused, which is also not out of the norm because there's several times she has called me with that same sentiment. And so she says, you called me in very much distress. <laughs> oh, are you? Well, that's kind of neat. Um, she says... I bought candy to put in our booth at the show and these packages say left Twix and right Twix. And so I bit into a left Twix and I tasted it and it tasted like a Twix. And then I bit into a right Twix and I tasted it and it tasted like a Twix. So what's the difference between a left Twix and a right Twix? And y'all, I almost died laughing. Like, I couldn't even answer her. I was like, are you for real? Like, is this a prank call? Am I on punked right now? Is that still a thing? Like, I could not. I did not even know that she was being legit. And she was being legit. She did not understand the difference between the left Twix and the right Twix. And I had to explain to her that it was a marketing ploy. And had she not seen any of the commercials... To which she replied, I don't watch TV, so how could I see the commercials? Oh my gosh, it was hilarious. So ever since then, we have been giving Marianne left Twix and right Twix and asking her if she could taste them and tell us the difference. So from here on out, I would love all of you to mail Marianne Twix. <laughs> Just to remind her. 
that I'm a smart, you know what? <laughs> they need, they should. Like, one should be dark chocolate and one should be light chocolate. Like, I definitely think they should. But that's, that's not, <coughs> that wasn't the point of their marketing. Okay, somebody said <coughs> orange. <coughs> Excuse me. Or like a yellowish orange. So... I would be totally down with one being milk chocolate and one being dark chocolate and having left and right in the same package. So you could have a milk and a dark in the same package. Like I'm, I would be all over that because then Sandy and I could share Twixes. And I do like Twix. It was just so funny. I guess you had to be there, but it was hilarious. And then she came to our retreat in Texas, just out of the kindness of her own heart, to be fun and have a great weekend with us in Texas, which poor thing ended up with strep throat, but whatevs. And we had bought her a massive amount of Twix. What was it, like a three-foot Twix or something like that? Um, you would know because like left Twix is dark chocolate and right Twix is milk chocolate and you could see the difference in dark and milk chocolate. And if you can't see the difference, you can taste the difference. So far, all I've talked about is Twix <laughs> and not a whole lot of coloring. But as you can see, this is very repetitive. And I'm just doing this because I want to make a whole bunch of flowers, not necessarily um, because you have to do this each time. But I wanted to show you that you can really make a bunch of flowers in a short amount of time, depending on the way you do this. Um, I choose to Copic color my flowers because I am a Copic colorist. Um, however, you can choose to ink blend your flowers. Speaking of which, Marianne, I do have a bunch of oxide inks left over if you um, are still interested in them. Anyways, so you can use inks on your flowers. You can use um, pattern paper. You can use, I mean, really, the sky's the limit on what you use. <laughs> Just give TSA a Twix bar and they'll let you through. It's fine. Ask him if he's a left Twix or a right Twix kind of person. So I need two more colors. If anybody is so inclined to suggest colors for flowers, two more flowers over here. Or do you want me to just color these three and put them together? Totally up to y'all. I was trying to make this a fairly quick live because we have an enormous amount of die cutting ahead of us. And we haven't been home for very many days. Plus we got to run an inventory and pack. I leave on Tuesday morning for Michigan. Hoping everything makes it on time. Lime green. I'm making a, well, this is an orangey yellow one. I could make a yellow one, Mom. Pink, red. All right, let's do a pink one because I have a pink combo that is in my brain that I can pull out real quick. And a lime green. I could do lime green. Okay, so it's between lime green and yellow. What, what, what do you all want?
Mom, I'm surprised you didn't say red. Red's been your favorite color for years and years. Unless you're walking away from the red as your favorite color. Or are you just saying that Gerber daisies come in yellow a lot? Y'all, my mom made some candy yesterday. Marianne, you're gonna die over this. You're gonna just die. So she made divinity for my uncle. So I got a random batch of divinity. Um, and don't worry, Marianne, I'll mail you a couple pieces. I'll share, even though it's really difficult for me to share. Um, but then she took divinity and she chocolate dipped it. Yes, oh yes, she chocolate dipped the divinity. And let me tell ya, OMG. I am so glad that my husband is not a fan of divinity because let me tell ya, he was like, what are these brown things in the refrigerator? And I was like, it's chocolate dipped of divinity. And he's like, um, hard pass. And I was like, thank goodness. Um, so anyways, I went to her house to pick up macaroni salad because she told me she'd made macaroni salad, which I had for dinner last night, and it was amazing. But as I was there getting the macaroni salad, she had made divinity, and she was like, my first batch of divinity didn't work out very well. It didn't set very well. So I chocolate dipped it just to see if it was something. And oh my gosh, you guys, it's like nougat. It is oh so amazing. So, yeah. Sorry, not sorry. It will be going with me to Michigan. Not even gonna lie. Divinity 2.0. Well, she is trying to think of a name of it. A name for it. But... Oh, man. I can't even. It's so good. Are you guys all excited to see how these flowers come out? I'm trying to think of what other flowers it could be besides daisies and Gerber daisies and zinnias and dahlias. What else could it be? I mean, I suppose if you drew a center in, you could make a sunflower. I'm just not all that up on knowing all of my flowers, I guess. It is good. <laughs> it is. It's amazing. All right. So this last one, I have votes on the table for blue and vote, or I mean, sorry, votes on the table for lime green and votes on the table for yellow. So we're going to start it as a lime and it's going to come out to yellow. How do you feel about them apples? I'm going to take the best of both worlds. Subscribe and save program. <laughs> you need a monthly shipment of divinity. This one's like an Alice in Wonderland flower. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, to equalize the pressure within the barrel B so that I don't get blobs on my paper. Um, the, the core inside of here is cotton wrapped in plastic. And so when you fill your markers, if you just take one cap off, all of the ink will go to the point of least resistance and it will blob onto your paper. Um, additionally, your hand is warm and so the ink molecules will warm themselves up and thus start moving faster. And if you don't have both caps off, that will also make it blob. So by taking the chisel cap off, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but there's holes on either side of the chisel and that allows air in to equalize the pressure within the barrel and prevents that blobbing from happening. How's that for a super scientific um, answer to your question? Yes, always color with both caps off. Always, always, always. That's why we have these handy little stands so you can put your brush nib cap here and your chisel nib cap here and that way you don't mix them up either because if you mix up your caps when it's time to clean, you're gonna be double cleaning everything, every cap, every nib, every everything. So if you keep your caps on the same ends, always, you will not have to clean nearly as much because the chisel doesn't actually touch the cap where the brush nib does. So always put your caps back on the same ends. All right, guys, we are done with the coloring portion of this video for now anyways. Oh, hey, Marianne, <laughs> ask her how she knows. Don't be out me, bestie. Just throw me under the bus right there. Marianne, I forgot to show you my glue holder. Oops, I just hit the camera. My glue holder perfectly holds my, my bunny embossing brush. Okay, so I have those. Now I'm gonna grab my dies. And I take my dies, this is also a Sandyism. I take these business card um, magnets and I put them on here and then that way I can stick my dies to them. And so I've had a few people ask lately. Um, yeah, I don't know if it's her internet or <coughs> if it's just the time that she's on Facebook, everybody's on Facebook. I know, right? Craft Room Sorcery, so it doesn't fall over. I love it. I also take my glue holders and I put scissors and a gel pen and my handy dandy ruler from Marianne in here. And then the other one holds my Barely Art glue. And then don't, don't even judge me. I have one for stickles too. So yeah, don't judge me. Okay. So it keeps less stuff on your desk. It's very handy dandy to just have this sitting on your desk as opposed to everything laying all over. So I've had a few people ask me lately about cutting your dies apart and I wanted to show you this. So your dies all have these big pieces and then these little teeny tiny like wires that hold them together. So what you wanna do is you wanna take some wire snips or whatever it is that you wanna use um, I got these specific ones from Concord and Ninth, and you want to cut off all of those little wires. And it leaves you with just the die. So I'm not going to cut all of these apart um, just because of time here on the video. But you want to cut all of the little wires off. And then you just have your dies. So you don't want these little wires to be on your dies. Okay. I'm going to set that aside. I'll finish cutting those later. Then 
what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find my yellow tape. Where'd I put my yellow tape? Sandy, where's my yellow tape? I just, oh, there it is. You notice how I asked Sandy first, right? Okay, so I have this little teeny tiny die cutter right here. And I love this little thing. I never thought that I would like it. In fact, I gave it to my mother at one point and then it just sat in her closet and she never used it. So then one day I was like, I have all these little teeny tiny dies. I just need it. And let me tell you, it's amazing. I love having it sitting on my desk. I honestly don't know which die is for which flower, but pretty sure I got that one right. Look at that. I should go buy a lottery ticket today. I thought that somebody got you one. I thought your mom said she had one for you or something, Sandy. No? Am I wrong? Because I stopped my hunt for one. Because I thought your mom said she had one for you. Okay, so I'm only going to be able to cut two of these at a time. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this one off. All right, well then, if you're still looking for one, then I'm still working for one. Oh, look, Marianne. Marianne's got one right there for you. How nice. That's so sweet of you, Marianne. All right, so there's one. You have like a ton of little dies, Marianne. You don't use yours at all? That's cray cray. I use mine for your dies. Look at what amazing community we have. Marianne, I'll trade you. I'll give you um, oxide ink pads for it if you still need them. There we go. That's how we roll. Because I want my bestie to have one. You run all your dyes on big sheets? I do too, except for when I'm live and doing little things like this because I want people to be able to see it. Y'all, I'm killing it with these dyes today, let me tell you. Now this thing usually um, clamps to the desk, but I have it sitting on paper, so I know you don't go live. I'm very well aware. If I had my glass mat down, it would, it suction cups directly to the glass mat. So it's wiggly. That's what I'm looking for, Sandy, you are correct. I mean, I could go get my glass mat and set it down and do all the things, but it seems like a lot of work. So I'm just gonna deal with the wiggly for now. You can hear the 3D printer in the background. I have not stopped printing for the last 72 hours-ish. How long have I been home? Literally been printing since I've been home. I 
and making all the glue holders the rabbit hole designs uh, embossing brush holders. <laughs> I didn't realize it, but my embossing brush always like falls over. I had it sitting in one of my honey bowls and it always falls over. And so just one day on a whim, I picked it up and I put it in there and I was like, oh my gosh, it fits perfectly. So that was awesome. Right? Yeah, Sandy has hers in the clutter caddy. So my clutter caddy has some tools in it, but you can also put this in there like that. You can put your spray bottle in there. It's a lot of cutting, guys. It's actually really not a lot of cutting, but it seems like it when you're sitting here, like trying to go through it all. And I thought I was awesome, but I'm pretty sh much thinking now that all of these are symmetrical and all the dyes fit all the flowers. So we're just gonna pretend that I think I'm awesome, okay? Joy and April have the same taste in paper. I got exactly the same. Oh my gosh, that's funny. Hi, Tammy, my sweet friend. I'm so happy you're here. That made my day. For those of you who don't know, Tammy is a longtime Sweet Sentiment follower, and she comes and comes to all the retreats and helps with the booths and stuff sometimes. And we just love her. A more amazing girl you will never meet. Super kind, but with a little bit of sass and snark. Just right. Right, Tammy? <laughs> Tammy Kirk. <laughs> That's funny. No, Marianne, Idaho. <laughs> My mom got all quiet. Did you get mad that I didn't color the flower yellow? I incorporated yellow into the flower. Does that count? Even if I didn't make the whole thing yellow, I used your suggestion. I know, that's what I'm thinking is they're all the exact same. Whatever. I mean, they have different lines in them and stuff, but um, I'm thinking they're all, like, I was smart enough to make them all the same size when I laid them out so that you could use all the dies to cut multiples at a time. But it was a long time ago that I laid all these out, so honestly, I can't be beholden to that. <laughs> Mom, I guess so. <laughs> I get, you're mad at me for putting not putting yellow into the flower or not putting enough yellow in the flower. I combined yours and Sandy's suggestions. Does that count? All right. So now my dyes are done. So I can put my little machine away. Oh my gosh, these nails. I cannot pick up anything. Okay, put my little machine away. <sighs> okay. Now, this is one of the only times that I actually use a bone holder. 
And so I probably, oh, I do know where it is. So I have an old Stampin' Up! bone folder. And I'm just gonna fold. So on one flower, I'm gonna fold them down so you can see. And then like on a different color, I'll fold them up so you can see. It really changes the look of the flower. We're gonna do all different shapes on these. How about that? So you can see what they look like all differently. Okay, so those ones are down. So I'll do these ones up. Kind of looks like a sea anemone. And I'm just putting a little bit of pressure on that paper. I'm not using water or anything to break down the paper fibers. I want it to stay rigid. Okay, now this one, I will, let me find a glue stick because I like to shape these with glue sticks. So one of my best flower shaping tools is a glue stick just like that. And so I will shape these down this way. Hmm, my glue stick is gonna be too thick for these, so. Okay. Oh my goodness. Okay. And I'm gonna do that with all of these. My mom can probably tell you what kind of flowers I'm making with all of these. I cannot. I'm sure my dad can because he's super into flowers. Okay. And then this one. This is a little challenging, but that's okay. They're gonna look super duper cool. Hi, pal. Lena could tell you all the flowers I'm making too, cause she's really into flowers too. So these ones I'm gonna shape the opposite way. So these would be curved in kind of like a dahlia or a, um, I don't know, something else with the flower petals curved in. Taking a work break. These are gonna be super duper cool. A mom, there we go. Marianne, you know the rabbit hole designs cup you got me so long ago, the tumbler, when I was on your team? I had Lena recode it so I could keep using it, but I still have it and I still use it daily. Just so you know. It weighs like 500 pounds now though, because I had Lena code it. So it had coating on top of the coating. <laughs> Just folding these on top of the bone folder, just like that. Okay, and these ones went this direction. I know. And I still have my orange Yeti cup that I use. 
Marianne hates my orange Yeti cup. Okay. Oh, and then I have this one. So this one, there's really no other way to shape it. So we're just going to do like we did with the first one. Ew. Conference call. You should switch to cups from Pinemark Creations. Shameless plug for Lena. All right. Okay. So there's that. Now we're going to start putting them together. I have my handy dandy hot glue gun. That is super hot. Okay. I'm going to try to do this without burning the holy living heck out of my fingers. So, um, fugliest color on earth. Wrong. You're so wrong. So I'm going to start. These are all very, very simple to put together. So you put a little bit of glue in the center. I like to put a fairly good sized dollop of glue because um, I like these to be raised. And I don't want to offset this so that it's perfect. I want to offset it a little bit more because I have another layer. So then this one goes in like that. You're right, it does look kind of like a mum. Okay, so then let's do the one that's opposite. Fluff them all up there. Okay, and then we have this. And you notice I did not use any special tools or anything like that. I mean, I used a bone holder, which most people have, but you can find something else entirely. Um, to use for that. Like I said, most of the time I end up using a glue stick from my hot glue gun. Okay. Now we're gonna do this one. And then we're gonna do this one. And you guys see how fast these go together? Now, like I said, you can put petals upon petals upon petals, layers and layers and layers, and eventually they will start kind of closing in on, e on themselves. Okay. 
But look at how cool that is. So, with that being said, I've made this little wreath. And it's just those wooden beads on some wire. That's literally all that this is. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna dip them in some glitter and then we're going to um, put them onto this little wreath. So let me find my glitter where I put it. Here it is. And I need my Barely Art glue. And I need my sponge. And then I, when I do flowers like this, I sometimes like to use real greenery. Well, real fake greenery. So I'm just gonna grab some little pieces of greenery. All right. Yeah, they would, Mom. You're right. It would totally look like zinnias. All right. So what I'm gonna do, and I ha we have a bigger flower that if you put these in the, the center of the bigger flower, then you would like for real get zinnias. So I take my Barely Art glue, and it's important that you use Barely Art glue for this because it dries invisible. and you're about to get glue like everywhere. So I'm gonna separate these petals. So that I can get glue in between like all of them. And then I'm just gonna like kiss the edges of the petals. Oops, throw my sponge. Try not to have any big globs of glue. And then I'm just gonna dunk it in there. Shake it all around. And then I am not sticking my fingers in there cause I am not that kind of girl. Yeah, I don't like having glitter everywhere. So there's one super pretty flower. And we're just gonna repeat the process. that in there so the glitter I use for this is from crazy creations and I'll set that right there hopefully you can see it um, to me it's the best flower making glitter ever um, it is velvet fine so it's not just micro fine it's velvet fine it's really I mean it's like powdered sugar and um, it just, I don't know, it's just so beautiful. To me, it's just absolutely gorgeous and the perfect glitter for making flowers. It doesn't overpower the flower, yet it's super duper pretty. that is except for I totally missed this petal with the glue entirely I don't know how I did that but we're about to fix it there all better okay 
I got two more flowers. So we got two more glue dunks to do. Glitter dunks. This kind of almost came out a rainbow, you guys. Sandy, are you gonna call dibs on this so that we can hang it in our booth? Are you guys all mesmerized? Because everybody stopped talking entirely. You do want this for our booth? It's funny because I made this wreath and I had it sitting on the desk. And Sandy's like, what is that? And I'm like, it's a wreath. And she was like, how is that a wreath? And I'm like, I'm going to put flowers on it. <laughs> Silly question. Well, I didn't know if you actually wanted it or not. So I'm going to take some of these and in order to make them look like they match this, I'm just going to kiss the edges of some of these with glue. And we're gonna dunk those. Okay, not a lot, but just enough to kind of frost them. so that it doesn't look like the flowers are frosted and the leaves are not. Okay, and let's see how we are with that. We might do one more, but I'm not real sure. Okay, so in order to cover up this, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna glue, like have that be the bottom of my wreath because I don't want that part showing. Thanks, Mom. When I'm super crafty, it makes my mom proud because she's the crafty one in the family. I am not. Like, if you see this, I can't even make a glue gun work. But my mom is definitely the crafty one. Hey, I just glued my finger to this, so that's cool. Yay for me. I want all the things. So this is about as crafty as I get. On making things that aren't cards. DNA. No, it skipped me. Let me tell you. Because my mom is way more crafty than I am. Okay. So look. It's red, orange, green, blue, purple. It's a rainbow. How cool is that? Sorry, I'm easily entertained. Um, and if you don't know what you're use, doing, just use a whole bunch of glue. That's, that's my motto. Like a lot of glue. Like I didn't realize until now that these wooden beads are going to like slide all over the place. So, you know, whatevs, it's fine.
<laughs> I'm totally not crafty like you are, Mom, though, and not in the same ways. I think I want this pink one, like, front and center. Maybe I want the orange one. I don't know. That's not the right glue. Ew, no butterflies. <laughs> I'm not a butterfly person. <laughs> Ask Marianne. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue down here. How many of you am I absolutely killing with this? That's what I wanna know. I know, right? Definitely should. I don't want to overlap that teal one like this. I think that's what's going to happen. And put a fly on it. <laughs> April is lots of butterflies. <laughs> lots of butterfly paper. Okay. And then you guys have probably noticed I have been hand tying bows um, and putting bows in the shop. So I thought that I would add some little, some little bows. Maybe I'll hit, let this hang sideways like that. What do you think? How about there? Yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, do not send Jamie butterfly stuffs. Do not. Hard pass. Will it make you laugh to know that I had butterflies released at my wedding, Marianne? True story. So yes, if you are challenged at tying bows, there is now in the shop um, bags of bows mainly because Marianne has challenged it by at tying bows and asked me specifically to make bags of bows. And so they're all double looped bows. Um, the random packs are just that, really random. So it's not what is exactly pictured. It is stuff that is other than what is photoed. But I'm not going to take a picture of every random pack of bows that I make because that seems a little bit ludicrous. So there you guys go. Now, the stamp set has centers. You can color centers for them and put them in here. Um, when I put a bunch of them together like this, I don't really like to do that. Um, I have little pearls and stuff that you can put in the center or other things like that but I generally just kind of like to leave it. So um, it's there for you if you want to use it, and it is there for you if you don't want to use it. So knock yourself out with that. But anyways, um, this is just a fun little project. Obviously you can make these with any of the 3D flowers that we have in our shop. Um, 
I hope that you really, really enjoyed this. I will upload this video to our YouTube channel when I get a chance. Um, tomorrow I will be doing another live, although I'm not sure what time. Um, we just have to see what works out with the family and all of that stuff. But I think it will be sometime around noon. Not 100% sure. So, anyways, there you guys go. There's our flower wreath for the day. So I hope you enjoyed Floral Friday. I hope that makes you happy. And we will see you sometime tomorrow. Toodles!